Guys, Ethereum is taking off like a rocket ship. And one of the reasons is because the world is starting to wake up that the internet as we use it today has some serious problems. And that blockchain technology stands a very good chance at solving some of these problems, and particularly so does Ethereum. And so I want to make this video today as a blockchain developer who works the Ethereum protocol on a daily basis to talk about how Ethereum can fix this. So before we get into that, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to become a blockchain master step by step from start to finish, then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so let's talk about a problem with the internet that people are starting to wake up to, and that's censorship. So basically, the internet is made up of a bunch of different platforms, or at least the things that most people use on the internet. It's made up of a bunch of platforms. And people running these platforms can basically just filter out the ideas or people that they want you to see or don't want you to see, okay? And this came to light recently with the banning of President Trump from Twitter and other social platforms. So, you know, censorship's been a problem for a long time, but I think this is one of the first times that a lot of people are seriously starting to think about it, okay? And so I'm not going to sit here and, like, weigh in on the pros and cons of this, whether this is the right decision or the wrong decision, all right? I'll let you all argue that out in the comment section below, but I want to talk about this because this is one of the first times that people are starting to realize how much power a lot of these internet companies have, that they can literally just like pull a lever and do these kinds of things. And that that could pose a potential threat, a potential risk to them furthering their own agendas, whether like the thing that they're trying to quote unquote cancel or, you know, filter out is right or wrong. Okay. And so Trump was banned from all these different social networks. So you can, you know, check out these articles and see the extent of these bans. Are they all permanent or like how, how severe are all they, right? You want to fact check all that yourself. But the whole idea here is that, you know, people are starting to wake up to a very prominent person uh, basically getting deplatformed, okay? And uh, it's not just Trump either, okay? So we saw, uh, you know, Parler was an app that was basically deplatformed from just web infrastructure. They kicked out of app stores. We have social networks. We have, you know, app stores where people distribute software. And then we also just have the infrastructure where, uh, you know, the actual technology is run. So if you're technical and you're watching this channel, or at least you desire to be technical, just know that uh, a lot of these internet companies also run infrastructure like AWS, Google Cloud Platform, where basically servers and databases are hosted. They have control of that stuff too. So, you know, if you have an idea that they don't like, or you're just a person that they don't like, then they have power over you. All right. So I'm not just saying that these companies are sitting back and just like pulling the lever and, and like canceling everybody that they don't agree with. Uh, they don't like that's that's not really what I'm saying. I'm talking I'm talking about a potential threat here. I don't really want to reduce this conversation to like a very simplistic like conspiracy theory type of thing, but I just want to highlight how big the problem actually is. Like it's multiple layers. It's social networks. It's app stores. It's also web infrastructure entirely. And the conversations even coming up with people who are responsible for these decisions. So you know Jack Dorsey, the CEO of Twitter, had a big thread the other day talking about. Uh, their decision to deplatform Trump from Twitter. He said, I don't celebrate or feel pride in our having to ban Donald Trump from Twitter or how we got there, right? So this is a very penitent uh, tweet thread. You should go check this out if you want to. But in the middle of it, he starts talking about Bitcoin, okay? So he says here, one of the reasons I have so much passion for Bitcoin is largely because of the model it demonstrates, a foundational internet technology that is not controlled or influenced by a single individual or entity. Um, This is what the internet wants to be, and over time, more of it will be. And he goes on to say, you know, we are trying to do our part by funding an initiative around an open, decentralized standard for social media. Our goal is to be a client of that standard for the public conversation layer of the internet. So he goes and outlines this. You can read more about it, right, about what what they want to do here. But the whole idea is that, you know, Jack himself realizes the nature of this problem, and that a more decentralized internet powered by blockchains can improve this problem. And sometimes when you try to fix a problem, you inadvertently create new ones. But there's likely a much better trade-off here uh, with some blockchain-based solutions over the long term compared to what we have now. And that's key. You know, this is going to take some time to work. It's not just going to happen tomorrow. We're not going to flip a switch and then have like a brand new blockchain-based solution that just fixes social media, fixes the entire internet. But I do think we're going to get there and it's going to take time. Now, that being said, 
Um, I do think that Ethereum is going to be the best fit for this in the short to midterm because, you know, Web 3.0 was the vision for Ethereum from day one. And of course, you know, most of the activity in Ethereum right now is surrounding financial based use cases because it's a pay to play system. It makes more sense. Those are the easier problems to solve. But I do think that Ethereum will be the best bet for part of this new layer for a new Web 3.0, a more decentralized internet that can help ameliorate some of these problems. Okay, so uh, let's talk about why. So what does blockchain do? How does it make this problem better? Well, one of the biggest reasons is censorship resistance. Okay, so basically, whenever you put information on a blockchain, you know, it's permanent, it can't be changed, no one can tamper with it. All right, it's, uh, it's decentralized. So let me put that in here in my notes as well. And that's one of the reasons that gives it censorship resistance. Also, it's decentralized, so no like single party controls it, right? The, the public ledgers maintained in all the nodes of the network, and they can't tamper with the data. And so when you're talking about creating blockchain-based applications that are powered by smart contracts on top of Ethereum, those will be required probably in order to run a new social network, for example. Um, then those would also need to be trustless, right? The, the code would need to be immutable. It can't change. You know, it's going to work the same way every time. Open source, you can audit the code, see how it works. There's no more black boxes, no more algorithms that nobody understands. And you can just see everything, you know, out there, okay? And so those are some of the merits to Web 3.0, why this is a much better way to do things once some of these hard problems are solved, okay? So the fact that people are starting to wake up to this is very good for you if you're watching this YouTube channel, you know, because if you're buying ETH and holding on to it, the asset is very likely to appreciate in value based on the demand for Ether to go up, okay? And, you know, if you've been watching this channel and you want to invest in your career, right, you want to jump into the crypto industry, become a developer, then it's also really good because the demand for this stuff is skyrocketing. I mean, I can't even think of the number of people who are going to be trying to build the next social network on top of, you know, blockchain. It's It's been tried quite a bit, but I can guarantee you there's just like even more people trying to do it now, all right, and they all need to hire blockchain developers. So, you know, if, if you're trying to land one of those high paying blockchain jobs, I mean, you can you can do that. And then also use that income to buy more Ether, right? It's just like this compounding effect. So yeah, you have a huge advantage right now to front run this big opportunity, front run all this demand. Okay. So let's talk about uh, the Web 3.0 stack with Ethereum. If you're new around here, or you just want to understand it better, like how does it work? So let's take a look at it and see how it, you know, helps this problem. So one of the things I mentioned earlier was these big internet companies who run all the web infrastructure, like Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud Platform, basically anybody that lets you host a web server or a database, all right, or any of those services like that. I've heard people talk about recently comparing uh, Ethereum to the AWS of Web 3.0. Essentially, it's the infrastructure that lets you create applications and host your database on blockchain. If Ethereum is like a global computer in that way. Basically, you can create programs that run on top of the blockchain. You can use the blockchain like a big database to store information on. Okay. So in one sense, that's a pretty fair analogy. And in this case, it's actually a really good analogy because it it removes the need uh, for these companies to host the blockchain portion of your application. And, and they really can be removed from the equation. Basically, you know, the blockchain is a peer-to-peer -peer network of nodes where you can store all the code and the data. So you can create smart contracts that would run like the back-end portion of your application. All right. And so as far as the front end goes, of course, you would use some sort of modern JavaScript framework to create a website that would talk to your smart contracts up the blockchain. You'd use like um, React.js, maybe some other popular blockchain framework to talk to your smart contracts. But uh, you can basically create those and put them on IPFS, which is the interplanetary file system. So this is a censorship resistant file system. Basically, it's just it, it works like a blockchain in, in one sense where... There are a bunch of different nodes that all talk to one another. They all maintain redundant copies of the files. And, um, you know, you can put a website on here and it can't just be taken down. All right. So you'll see this a lot. If you go look at any of the popular decentralized applications running on top of Ethereum right now, many of them have IPFS links where they'll host their website on IPFS. You can see like IPFS dot you know, uniswap.io or something like that, where they'll have decentralized maybe backups or, you know, decentralized ways to access their clients. So that's how you attack the problem from the ground up. So, you know, the deplatforming problem happens on web infrastructure. It happens on the platform layer. 
Uh, it also happens on the quote unquote app store later too. Okay. So I know like p part of the big, big things with uh, this argument is like people don't like the idea of like, well, if you don't like it, go build your own thing because like it's insanely hard to just build your own social network because of the network effects, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And I'm totally with you on that. But what I'm saying is this is the framework to start doing it on top of. So who knows like how big Web3 social networks will become, but these are tools to get it started for sure. And so if you want to get ahead of this problem and learn like how to create your own apps in this new Web 3.0 standard, then how can you do that? Well, you can go to my YouTube homepage, you know, you can find any of my free courses there, but I do have some specific ones that you can check out for. One is a course where I show you how to build a decentralized social network, right? Just like this. Another one is a decentralized Dropbox, a decentralized YouTube and decentralized Instagrams. There's lots of free courses there that'll show you how to use Ethereum, how to create smart contracts, how to put, you know, a website on IPFS. And if you like those videos and you want to take the next step, then I can show you how to build a, you know, professional level blockchain application step by step from start to finish. And no, you don't need to be an expert to get started today. You know, I've helped people with zero programming experience become, you know, professional blockchain developers in a matter of months. Okay. Just head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. So, that's all I've got. I hope you like this video. Make sure you smash that like button down below. Subscribe to the channel. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.